Hey guys, I'm Dr. Mirdalis Diaz Ramirez, and this is the Design Your Physician Life podcast. Welcome to this episode brought to you by our personal and professional development program called Max Salura Mastermind, which is a program for physicians who want to learn about entrepreneurship. And we have a cohort actually coming up this May. If you want to join us, please look at our website, maxsalura.com. Today, I'm going to be giving you the second part of our wellness checkup for you. Are you ready? Let's go. Welcome to the Design Your Physician Life podcast, where you will get excited about being a physician, learn the tools that can help boost your success, and great tips from successful doctors. Join us to unlock the keys to an amazing physician life. And now, here's your host, Dr. Mirdalis Diaz Ramirez. Hey guys, I hope that you had a wonderful week. Last week, we were talking about wellness for physicians and we went ahead and described how wellness is important for an entrepreneur and within the six pillars of entrepreneurship that we discuss in our Max Silver Mastermind. So our first pillar is vision where we design, we help you design that vision uh, for your life. And then we discuss mindset, we discuss financial, business aspects, aspects and the life stand lifestyle plan, but we also discussed the wellness factor. And last week we defined what the wellness factor was, things that we struggle with as physicians. And then we also discussed things that are important, like the pillars of lifestyle and how you can help yourself with managing your time. Today, we're going to be digging into some other aspects of wellness that help physicians build longer lasting businesses. And anybody who really wants to build a business should be considering this. As we know, most of the businesses that are created, they fail over 90% can fail, especially because of very poor management, but not only the management of the business itself is the management that the owners have from for themselves. And as physicians, if we want to learn about entrepreneurship, we really should look into having this pillar of wellness well taken care of. And there's no other experts like, experts like we are, right? We This is our livelihood. But many times it happens that we are not teaching, we're not, we're not living what we teach others. So that's why I thought it was very important that we reviewed this um, topic with you. So there's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And it's a very important uh, aspect that we discuss. I think every time I talk, I, let's say over half of the time, I always talk about this aspect. Join yourself. Go and take care of your relation, relationships with, with people who really want to bring you up and you want to bring them up as well with you. Learn from them, right? So how do we care for our relationships? We know that in lifestyle medicine, this is one of the pillars that we teach uh, our patients is being proven, is scientifically proven that having great relationships will help you live uh, longer, right? We know that married men live longer uh, than uh, single men, for example. So caring for our relationships at home or with friends or with our work uh, team is a critical component of our wellness. It can help us build strong social support networks. It can help us manage our stress. It can help us with our sense of uh, purpose and meaning. How do we do this? It has to be intentional. You know, many of us are very natural as um, caring for our relationships, but it's not everything's perfect. Many times we're going to find struggles. We're going to find differences, and we really should learn to deal with this so that we can have a more meaningful relationships, right? One of the things that we struggle with is the quality time. And many times we don't necessarily treat the relationships with the focus that they need. They should be the most important item on our schedule. We should protect them. So when we're building our yearly calendars, we might want to consider to put anything there first. What am I talking about? Vacation, family time. Whenever your child comes with their calendar for their year from school, uh, from their sport, that's the first thing that goes on the calendar. And if there's some 
other um, uh, things there already, we might want to consider switching them, right? Because that should be our priority. It's, um, it's about the journey and our children, you know, I have kids who are already going to live to high school. And one of the things that we've made in our family is that through the businesses that we've had, we've always had our kids as a priority. So there was only one event that I think they're never going to forgive us that we didn't go when they were in, in elementary school. But the truth is that I didn't see the event, uh, the announcement for the event. Otherwise, we would have been there. And at the time, we had our clinics, our pain clinics, and we never missed an event for our children. They were the most important thing. And I'm very proud that I was able to do that. And still to this day, it's going to be the priority. If one of us cannot go, the other one will, you know, they will never be going alone. As long as we know about an event, they will never be going alone to an event. If it's that they're doing sports or music, whatever it is, we're going to try to move, you know, everything that we can so that we can be there. So we really protect those relationships. Active listening. One of the things that uh, in our family we do is that we try to have dinner together as many nights as possible. That's one of the things that I gained. There was a period of time where I was going to the hospital every single day for three and a half years. And I was not having dinner with my kids. I was not, you know, I was just barely making it home so that I could put them to bed those those evenings. And I was spending a lot of time building the business and doing these things and at the clinic, but it was valuable time that we didn't spend at those dinners. And I learned, you know what, at least I put them uh, to bed and I really made the, the commitment with myself and with them that I would do that uh, as many nights as possible. And then as they grew, it was switched, not necessarily to you know, put them to bed. You don't have to put to put a, a, a teenager to bed, but you have to have meaningful conversations and do active listening for them. That that day didn't matter what happened at the office. It didn't matter what sort of crisis we had at the office. I could be there for them. Like we as parents could be there and listen to their daily struggles. What were their highs, their lows for the day? And listen to all the stories to the point that now they come to us and they just are feel so comfortable, open, telling us about their daily things. Obviously that they're not going to tell us everything, but we work so hard intentionally on building this relationship with our children. Active listening is something that we've done with them. And it's something that we try to do not only with them, but also with our teams at work, with our friends, whenever we're with them, you know, just having meaningful deep conversations. Uh, boundaries, setting up your boundaries. Now we all have needs and limits and we should share them to a healthy way. Sometimes we build actually boundaries that are like walls that are really not useful and they can break relationships. And I've seen that. I've seen that in very closely in my personal life where somebody was told, oh, you know, you need boundaries, but then those boundaries are like so, so deep or so strong that they uh, have put one aside and not, not been able to penetrate. But there's also boundaries that are soft, right? Where you say, you know, here's this um, situation and then you're able to have a conversation where both of your uh, needs and wants are well respected. Having meaningful chats, as I said, having conversations that go deep, they are going to be uh, really enriching your life every single day. And I recommend that you look for these opportunities wherever you can. In my work, I have to confess, I've been guilty of being very focused, right? Uh, very focused on, on what I do. And sometimes it's strong. And many times I might not have left a space for people to reach out to me and have that extra conversation because I really wanted to feel this goal from work. But if I make the... Uh, the intention from time to time to have those pockets and allow for those at work to approach me in a way that they feel comfortable. And they tell me, you know, whatever it is that's 
in their mind that I can help them with, or just by listening, you're helping them with, uh, that will make my relationship better in my daily basis. And this is an ongoing struggle that I have, but it's something that we have to be aware of and getting help, right? Recognizing that life happens, that if we're struggling, we shouldn't uh, hesitate to seek support to get things back in track. And we coach each other in our um, in our partnership. We have we are three physicians partners, and we coach each other because not all of us will have you know we have we have many strengths in different areas, but we're not strong all around necessarily. And we might struggle this day with this, another day with something else, and we try to seek help and coaching from each other. So very important that you build your relationships really is part of a good wellness plan and keeping in you know in mind as john maxwell says you'll never change your life until you change something you do daily the secret of your success is found in your daily routine and having a solid wellness routine is going to be very important the wake up time I know that many of us will automatically wake up even without the alarm. We cannot rely on the alarm, on waking up without the alarm. We should always have an alarm, I think, if we want to um, be able to uh, make sure that we're going to be present at our commitments. But the wake up time should really be consistent. It helps regulate our that clock. It promotes a better quality sleep. And we should just make sure that we get that wake up time there and also the time that we go to bed. Going to bed uh, can be a struggle. If you're having problems with anxiety or depression or burnout or preoccupations at work, things are not happening in terms of maybe the financial goals of this month or something with a relationship with somebody else or something that wasn't taken care of, those can affect our sleep. So it's very important that if we develop these routines, um, that we follow them because they can help us deal with those struggles as well. Uh, we have we have in our in our Maxeller Mastermind we have a journal that we give our physicians, and that journal has even a spot for them to uh, write down when they're hydrating through the day. We we can go through the day as physicians, you know, like if, for example, surgeons, sick surgeons, who 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 does surgery and has hours without hydrating, right? Very important. And next thing you know, you might get a kidney stone or, or a urinary uh, problem because you didn't hydrate well. Hydration is like basic. It's So we have to rehydrate our body after a night of sleep. It helps us boost our energy levels and it helps us kickstart our metabolism. And who doesn't know that, right? We're mainly made of water. So it's important we keep that water flow going. In terms of exercising, exercising actually can be in the shape of many things. It doesn't have to be running, you know, to me, um, if I'm running, it's because somebody's following me. So that's not going to be an exercise that you're going to see me doing frequently. But there's some other sorts of cardio that I do. And your, your body, I, I've, I've done pain management for over 20 years. And the patients would come and tell me, you know what, I've... um. I did that physical therapy and that didn't help me and I don't want to go back there. The truth is that there's so many different exercises that you can do to get better in whatever situation or recondition yourself or get yourself to the next level that this thing that physical therapy in general didn't help me. Really, I have not seen that work. There's different combinations of exercises. You can exercise your your um your arms, your legs, your back, your whole body in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be, as I said, running. It can be the pool. Many people do well in the pool. Even gardening, being outside, outdoors, doing something that takes uh, your body to a different level for 20 to 30 minutes on a regular basis is going to be very important. It will increase blood flow. It will increase tension in your muscles. It improves your, it improves your mental clarity. It gives you time to think and be creative as well. So it helps you uh, getting ready for the next steps in your life. Mindfulness um, has been something that we practice. And there's an exercise, and I invite you to do this exercise. If you look it up, go on YouTube and look Priming Tony Robbins. Priming 
Tony Robbins. And you look up, he has different versions uh, published of this. I like versions from a few years ago where he goes through this exercise of priming is around 15 minutes. And this is an exercise that I like to do regularly. And I also do it when I feel the worst. And it's not that I'm, I'm associating this exercise with the worst that I feel. It's like it just makes me personally feel so much better that whatever is really bothering me comes to a second plane. And then I have, I develop mental clarity to be able to deal with that. So that exercise has been important to me. It doesn't work for everybody. You know, you, some people might feel, uh, might be a little more self-conscious than others. This is an exercise I have to confess. I go in front of the water. I sit there in the car, take my time, and then just go through this exercise. And then it helps me just free up my brain where I can go to the next level. So if anything that you learn from today, is like look that up. And if that exercise, you say, you know what, this is exercise is really not for me. Look for one that really suits you because mindfulness has been shown to reduce stress, anxiety. It increases focus. It definitely increases my focus and improves my overall well-being. Uh, so it can also improve your well-being in your life. Uh, during that exercise, there is something that happens that is called visualization. And you think about having achieved your goals that you've said before. And it happens in a very quick way. There's different ways that you can visualize. There's other meditations that I do. Um, for those who don't meditate, there's actually different types of meditation. Uh, there's one that's, for example, I think one of the most difficult is called loving kindness. And with loving kindness, you are really sending love and welcoming love from people that you don't agree with. And I think that's one of the most difficult ones, but depending on the situation that you are, you can have different types of meditation. And one type of meditation that I do is uh, visualization and it helps me set my goals. Uh, this can happen at bedtime. There are some that I play with. Um, I'm going to tell you a couple of websites that I really like for meditation. One of them, and I recommend them to my patients as well. One of them is Jason Stevenson. And I go for, when you're looking for these uh, meditation websites or, or channels, I go on YouTube, you know, I go for, for the free meditation there because everybody can afford it free, right? Online, YouTube. And I go for the ones who, uh, which have the most views in the least period of time. That means that people really like them. And once again, you are going to look for this and you're going to see what suits you the best. So Jason Stevenson is a channel that uh, people really like and I enjoy as well. And they have wonderful visualization uh, meditations there and I do them at bedtime. There's another one that I really love, which is called The Honest Guys. So look for those two channels, Jason Stevenson and Honest Guys, and you'll find wonderful visualization uh, meditations. You can have meditations that will help you sleep. You can find meditations that will help your energy, any pains that you might have, any discomfort, any anxiety, any depression, you will find a meditation for anything in your life. There's even stories that can help you uh, guide your brain as well as music that will get you in the zone. Um, talking about sleep, I didn't tell you some people use what's called brown noise, not white noise, but brown noise. And you can look for brown noise and see how that can help you as well. Lastly, there's this thing called gratitude. And one of the things that we tend to do if I ask you, okay, make a list. And actually you can pause the, the recording right now. Just sit down and make a list of the things that you want to have. Go ahead, make a list of those. And then you say, okay, I want, a, I want this, I want that, I want that, I want that. Well, how about thinking about, because what happens is when we write those lists, Many times we'll write about the things that we don't have, but the things that we want to have actually can include many things that we already have. For example, many of us, believe it or not, might have a job where we're very happy with, right? A good and safe job. Boom, you have it. Many of us have a partner that we want to be with and some of the rest of our lives. So there you go. You have it. A family, children a life in a safe place, a good home, the ability to do exercise, the ability to get good food on your table, great relationships. These things we already have. 
And if we have them, we should be grateful for them. Many times we're going to have challenging days where it's not everything that we wanted to have, right? But when those days happen in my world, in my mind, I say, you know, at least I didn't have these things and I have these other things that make me be safe in my world, make me be happy because I've been able to achieve them. And uh, having that level of gratitude, that component of gratitude, expressing gratitude um, in private and also to people will help us. It helps us recognize our abundance and richness in our lives. And it makes us feel uh, like we've lived fulfilling lives, right? And it's not, not a great population, you know, not, not, not a great number of people who get admitted to medical school, for example. And I know about the challenges and, and about the evolution of, of uh, healthcare and where physicians are. And that's why we're here, you know, talking about these things we, when we could, you know, maybe do some other things that might be uh, more productive with our lives than trying to, you know, help burn out physicians or physicians uh, who feel lost, regain control of their lives. But the truth is that regardless of all the challenges that we have in healthcare, as physicians, we went through a funnel and we were able to become physicians and we've been able to fulfill that dream. For most of us, it's our dream. Some of us were feeling somebody else's dream and that's really not successful. Um, but for having fulfilled your dream of becoming a physician, I think that's more of the most you know wonderful things you can do. And when you go to that room, and you're in front of those patients, those patients really, they trust you for the most part. And having that connection, having the ability to, to have achieved being a physician, you know, on its own, it's something that I think we should be grateful for. So now the next step is living the life of a physician under our own terms, right? That's what we want to do. Jack Welch says that delegate, empower, and trust your team they are the ones who will make your vision a reality. And why are we talking about this? We're talking about this because we're talking about wellness for the physician who wants to be an entrepreneur. And for entrepreneurship, we know that, and even in the, you know in our medical lives and any life, in any lives, like if you have a dream, yes, you're going to be having the vision, but we'll need help for anything that we do. We need help in the OR. We need help in our clinics. We need help at home. We need we need help all all the time. And how developing a team that's going to be there with you is going to take a lot of work and dedication. And if you're delegating, most of us obviously have a busy schedule and we have a demanding workload. If we are delegating, we're outsourcing our tasks that are not necessarily like not meaningful to us, uh, but things that others can do instead of us. So then we can free up some more time and reduce our stress. And that's where the wellness uh, component is, right? We want to be more productive, having less stress, and we want things to be taken care of. So we're going to first make a list, take an inventory of the things that are giving, that are wasting our time, right? Where we can be doing some more productive things from our point of view, given our training and our level of, level of expertise. And those things that might be maybe causing some stress that we can give away to somebody else. We're going to then identify those tasks also that they don't require our skills that, um, you know, I truly don't like to wash dishes. So in my case, I've, uh, we've done that as one of the things that our kids do and they get compensated for that, but they're the ones washing the dishes most of the time. When I wash the dishes, it's because, you know, I want to be part of the team and I want to contribute to that. But, you know, just in the in the home situation at work, I would love to be the queen of social media. But that sets, you know, that takes so much time away from the things where I could be developing the business, taking care of the patients. And uh, so we have addressed that by delegating it to somebody else, finding a delegate is something that's going to be very important. You want to find somebody who's going to be part of your team and train them and cherish them. They're part of your team. And one of the things that I talk about, and you've heard me talk about this in the past, probably if you've heard about my other podcast, is what I call the Monster Sync um, 
component, right? Or, or effect where if you haven't seen Monster Inc., here it goes. So you might want to jump over this part, but basically Monster Inc., they develop energy by scaring the children. The monsters scare the children. They develop energy for their cities. And then eventually they find out that not scaring, but making them laugh gives them more energy. And that same concept we want to bring to our workplace and to our homes. Instead of scaring people and making them upset and making them sad, we want to build our teams. We want to build our families, our relationships where we're contributing happiness and we're getting happiness from them. Not everything is going to be, you know, flowers and hearts and and little birds and everything. We're going to have our challenges. But if you put that as an intention of building your teams and uh, your delegates where you have those relationships where you're teaching them a lot, doesn't matter. Don't, if you fear, if you're always in constant fear that you're going to teach something, something to somebody and they're going to leave you, yes, they're going to leave you, right? And even if you're not in fear and they end up leaving you, you want for those relationships to be great relationships, right? You want somebody that you can teach that can complete you in a way that brings value to the team, that you can trust, build that trust uh, and feed them good information. So for example, we have been able to partner with a, a virtual assistant company that uh, they teach mindfulness to their employees and they teach them many courses of the things uh, that they're missing uh, knowledge at, or if they have a question, they have these groups where they can go there and learn more so that they can be better virtual assistants for, for us. So that's an extension of our company. That's it's not only an extension of our company, that's our company because our employees are going to be with us for a longer period of time. And then using it well, using your help well, making sure that the time that we're gaining from outsourcing is well spent. So we have them doing that so that then we can do other things that are going to be important um, for us in our companies. There's this guy uh, that changed our lives. And if you haven't heard if you haven't heard, because it's not a book that's available to read, it's, a, it's an audio book. It's the ultimate guide to Jim Ron. I think that's the name, Jim Ron, R-O-H-N. If you haven't heard that uh, audio book, I highly recommend that you do that. That's going to be, people ask me what, what's one of the best, you know, what people ask you, which book should I read for entrepreneurship? And I'm going to tell you one thing is that did you only read one book to become a physician? No, right? You have, you read multiple books and in it's like microbiology and, and anatomy and physiology and not only one book, like each one has, you know, many books. Um, so not only one, not one sole book will make you an entrepreneur. This is the same as uh, diverse as when you're becoming a physician. It's the same thing. It's a learning experience. And one of these authors is Jim Ron. He was a um, person that dealt a lot with mindset and he called it instead of mindset, he called it philosophy, right? Your life philosophy. And he said that motivation is what gets you started and habit is what keeps you going. So we've talked about habits already and there's some other habits that are important for physicians or anybody, as I said, who wants to uh, be a good entrepreneur. So entrepreneurship uh, has helped me with my uh, sense of burnout. And that's why we're teaching it. It has provided uh, to me an outlet where I can unleash my creativity and my sense of innovation, looking for uh, other new things all the time. And um, it has been to me energizing and stimulating. Uh, it has given me sense of purpose Working on entrepreneurship every single day is a habit that I've made part of my life. And that's why I teach others because I know the value of it. And I know that it can help others either prevent a burnout in, in medicine, treat it and uh, reverse that burnout. Seeking joy first is going to be the most important thing. There's a concept called Ikigai where it's a balance of those things that we want and we need. And uh, you can maybe look for joy, but to me, 
if I wanted to be at the beach all day long or watching the sea or the or the sky or something like that, that brings me joy. I cannot be doing that all day long, right? So I have to seek joy in the things that are really going to be able to sustain my family. And passion is the number one thing that should move whatever we do. So in entrepreneurship, in whatever you do, I recommend that's a habit that whatever you decide to do, that that's going to be driven by passion, by looking for joy first. So look for those interests that will give you a sense of fulfillment and purpose. So remembering why you're doing things is going to be a very important, strong part of your habits. That has to be a daily. Why did I wake up today? Why am I doing this thing? What am I making this sacrifice today when maybe I could be doing something else? Accountability is another special habit. And we have our Max Salary Mastermind, which is a six month program where we meet once a week with our physicians and their couples if they want to bring their couples as part of their entrepreneurship career. And we go through that minute of accountability. So we say in front of each other what we've made already happened in the last week for our projects, the projects that bring us to this mastermind. And we have many diverse projects. Each, each of us is looking for something different. And I'm not only a facilitator, I'm also a member at the same time because we always have projects going and we grow together. And then we also make ourselves accountable for the next week. What are you going to achieve next week? And you don't have to be on a mastermind if uh, you can do this with somebody else. But it's important because if you're doing anything alone, as I said, you know, we are not going to achieve many things being in isolation. We achieve things with teams, with coaches, with people who have been there, with people who have, who help us grow, with people who are going to be, people who are going to um, make us accountable. So uh, we are accountable for our things in this group, for our projects, for progress. We all want to make sure that we're advancing. So that brings us to that sense of community, the support system that gives us a sense of belonging and that's going to be very important because if you, as I said, if you're in isolation, you're going to go to burnout. Um, in our team, we have physicians who have been there like we have. They have been through the transition in medicine. There are different levels of their um, journey in medicine, but they know firsthand what it is to first become a physician, what's required from you, and to live that physician life, and then to transition. We're all learning together how to transition from that physician mindset from that physician life to a life of joy driven by purpose where we're back again in control and uh, we retain, we remain in control of our lives. Many of us will want to help others once we find that, right? Like we've done, that's why if you have this podcast, please go. If you if this is the first episode you listen to, go back and listen to all the wonderful things that other physicians are doing to help uh, to help each other. And there has been, never has been a better time for physicians to help each other than this time. If you have any questions about how you can do something, there's many physicians that will be available to help you. And now that you've learned many of these things, now is your time to go and help others. Okay. We also encourage you to make it a part of your uh, routine and your habits to dabble, to explore resources from other uh, physicians. As I've said, there's a conference, uh, there's different conferences, there's different groups, and you don't only have to dabble within the physician groups, go out and look out for other things outside the physician world. They're going to make you come and grow and come with bigger ideas. You know, I don't know, there's so many things happening in our world outside the, um, the medicine world the world of healthcare that you can learn from, bring ideas and then you can implement and they say, oh my goodness, I saw this. If I saw this happening in this uh, place, I can come and then maybe transform my company or my uh, my world, my, my surroundings with these ideas. Um, as Jimmy Dean says, you can't change the direction of the wind, but you can adjust your sails to always reach your destination. And in this life, I tell you that it's not about who's the toughest, it's who adapts the best that we know. I hope that you had a wonderful time learning about some other things that you can do 
for your wellness as a physician, as a physician who wants to learn entrepreneurship. If you have any other questions, please reach out to us. Listen to more of our podcasts. Tell us your ideas and check out our website if you want to learn about our uh, upcoming cohort for our uh, Max Salary Mastermind. You learn, you earn CMEs with each hour that you put. Remember, it's six months, once a week. We're a wonderful team of people, physicians from all over. This time right now, at the time of this recording, we have physicians all the way from uh, Hawaii, even to Puerto Rico and in between. So it's a wonderful group, physicians who want to develop products in fashion. We have physicians who want to work in their clinics, uh, develop uh, cash uh, only practices. We have so many uh, different interests and I would highly recommend that you check us out if you want to develop your physician life. I'll see you then. Have a great day. Please remember that Design is not providing specific financial, medical, or career advice. Our only intent is to stimulate your appetite for growth by sharing our experience and those of our speakers, coaches, and guests. Your personal growth and success will be unique to your circumstances and your hard work. We sincerely hope you enjoyed the show and look forward to seeing you next week.